Hi everyone and good morning. And we're coming to you today from the MSC Magnifica cruise ship. In this video, we're gonna show off everything this cruise ship has to offer from the restaurants and the food to the bars and the drinks, all the entertainment and more. I go by the legend, jump by my wonderful girlfriend Molly on this adventure. And we're starting out with really the kind of the heart and soul of the cruise ship. And that is the pool deck area. On deck 13. Yes, um, one big pool, two hot tubs, a big pool bar as well, a really good sized pool bar. Try one. I like that they have a little kid's pool. I think yes. that's really nice. And there's also a large area for activities. It's where your sail away party is. MSC does parties really, really well. On our four night sailing, there's been a, a whole bunch of different deck parties. There was a sunshine party, which is kind of like 70s and 60s and 80s music. There was a tropical party. There was their big white party. So they do parties really, really well on this ship. And a lot of times during the day, it's just a, kind of a quiet place to relax. And they do have music here. Sometimes they do have games on Sea Day. There was a yep. Mission Impossible. Uh, I think they have mini golf court tournament today. That could be fun. Cool. All right, let's go check out the rest of the ship. By the pool deck, if you go sort of above where the stage is, on the top deck here, you can get to a lot of sun loungers and just kind of open deck space as well. So if you want to watch sailing into or out of a port, this might be a pretty good place to do so. Right now we're on the Lido deck in the solarium area, which I think is something very important for a ship to have, as it's the big indoor pool. It's actually a retractable roof, so if there is nice weather, they could open it up. Two hot tubs. Two hot tubs, a nice sized pool. I love the ice cream statue. Yes, because there's a gelato stand down there mm -hmm. at the bar. For a couple bucks, you could buy some gelato. And I like this too. Up here on the second level of the solarium, you've got ping pong and foosball. Actually, one of the events later on today, they're having a 18 and over foosball tournament. Ooh. I like the, uh, the cactuses as well. That's a nice touch. We are currently all the way at the top of the ship, right by the funnel. Deck where, 15. Where they have the sports court area. It has a couple different things in here. Sometimes it'll be used for soccer. Sometimes it'll be used for tennis or pickleball. You've got a kind of a, a cool basketball hoop up here as well. Just it's only on one side, but you're kind of shooting like right by the funnel. It is interesting because there are times of when the uh, the balls for the sports are here. So we're in between when the basketball and soccer ball got taken away and they're setting up pickleball. Yep, so right now there's just nothing happening up here. Yes. Throughout the upper deck, you will find a couple of different shuffleboard courts, but there's nowhere to get the stuff no, we've of which to play there. shuffleboard with. It is also a weird, like, the weird shuffleboard. Yes, it's it's got to be either European or old, I'm not really sure. It looks more complicated. If you booked at Aurea category or above, you will gain access to the top 16 executive solarium, exclusive solarium. We booked an interior cabin with the Bella package. <laughs> so unfortunately, this is all we could show you from there. On deck six is where you'll find the Tiger Bar, which um, from a, a design aesthetic standpoint, looks like a weird basement straight out of the 70s. Yes, it does. Um, there's another very large lounge, uh, one that a lot, a lot of stuff happens in. This is where you'll find Name That Tune has been in here every single day. Um, there's been Latin music in here pretty much every night. I, this gentleman's playing piano now, that's cool. And um, this is also where they would move the parties. The deck parties get moved in here if there's inclement weather. Mm-hmm. And the game shows are in here. Yes. They have a nightly game show every single night at 830. And these chairs here, pretty comfy. On decks five, six, and seven is the atrium on board. And I really, really like this atrium because they've got a water feature. It doesn't so, pick up really well on the camera. No, it's like a very light waterfall. And then there's a pond. Now the atrium's not used for a lot of activities. Um, there'll be more just like, kind of like relaxing music in here. There's mm -hmm. been a steel drums guy. There's been a piano player. Saxophone player. Saxophone player. And there are bars in the atrium area. There's on deck six and deck five, right before the dining rooms. Um, this is also where you'll find a lot of the notes and bolts stuff. So things like your shore excursions, desk, guest services, they're gonna be over here in the atrium area as well. But yeah, I really, really like the, the fountain and the pond. We're currently at my favorite bar on board this ship, and that is the La Olympiade Sports Bar. You can play, when the bar is open, you can play pool for about $7 a person. And I like the, kind of the, the motif and stuff in here, like the, the soccer ball, soccer ball lamp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they have like lots of interesting kind of like Olympic memorabilia as well, like a, I think the Italian rowing team. Um, 
<laughs> they will have like sports on here in the evening. Uh, we were sailing during the college football championship game, and that was on with the sound on as well. Yes, they do advertise their sounds not usually on, so yeah. Take but that. I guess for the big big games they do. They put might, on. yeah. I do also like this. They will tell you everything that will be on during the day, and this gets updated pretty much every day. Uh, the, and it's just uh, it's a lot of neat touches, like the running track on the floor and the pictures. I think the the highlight has to be the bobsled. Um, the Spars also home to my favorite musicians on board the ship. They'll have a, a guy that plays like country music guitar, and he's been really, really good. Also, this is the bar with the best selection of beers and wines on board. Yes. I like the Olympic torches, too. Yeah. Cool bar. Located on decks six and seven in the front of the ship is where you'll find the main show theater on board the MSC Magnifica. And it's a really nice theater, big theater, plenty of seats, never had a hard time. You didn't really have to get there early for a show because there were just so many seats. All the shows in the evening, they do run twice as well. And during our four-night sailing, there were four different shows. Night one was a show called Rock Legends, which is a big 80s rock and roll show. Pretty much, if you've been on a cruise ship before, it's kind of standard cruise ship show with some of those classic rock songs. Night two was a little bit different. That was Elvis the Songbook, which was kind of like an Elvis tribute act for about 40 minutes or so. Pretty solid. First time I've seen an Elvis one on a cruise ship, so that was made it interesting for me. Night three was a guest performer. This was a male vocalist who was actually really good. He was funny, self-deprecating humor, great voice, made it a really easy watch. Night four was the big show, and this was just awesome. It was a show called A Circus Story, and it had singing and dancing, but in between every singing and dancing number, there was all sorts of specialty acts that would happen. There was a juggler. I think my personal favorite one, there was a guy that came out on a bicycle and did like BMX tricks. There was a hula hooper who was really good and like good costumes in the show too, like people in like zebra outfits. There was people doing roller skating stunts, big Cirque du Soleil as trampoline acts as well. By far my favorite show on board the ship was A Circus Story. If that is on your sailing, don't miss that show. Amazing that these people can do all this acrobatic show on a moving cruise ship. Awesome show, really had fun in the theater on this cruise. At this moment, we're on deck 14, all the way in the back of the ship at the ship's nightclub. It's a very, very large nightclub. It I think is, it's, it's massive. As massive far as dance floor. As far as like cruise ship nightclubs go, this is one of the larger ones that I've seen. Now they do let you take drinks on the dance floor. Yes. Unlike a lot of other cruise lines. Yes, it doesn't get going until very, very late. Like the nightclub normally starts around around like 11.45 or midnight. Midnight, because the kids club's up here and that closes at 11. Yeah, but a pretty good sized nightclub. We were up here one night and it was very crowded, very fun. The other night it was kind of quiet. I think the first night it took a lot of people to find this area. Yeah, it is located nowhere near any of the other bars and lounges on the ship. And it does, uh, you do have to kind of find your way. It's not the easiest mm -hmm. thing. Also kind of a weird quirk here with the nightclub, it doubles as the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's been working on our cruise, but they do have one of these mini bowling, I think for like, I think it's like $5 to play when it does function. And if you're at the nightclub and you need some fresh air, it does take you to an outdoor deck where you could come and uh, just, yep. Or this would be a nice place to, uh, again, watch a sail in, sail out. I don't think this deck gets really busy out here. On deck 13 is where you will find the spa on board the MSC Magnifica, and it's a very nice spa. I do like this area here, sort of the waiting area. They also have a bar where you can get smoothies, and if you're on a beverage package, you can actually get Gatorades in there, which helps you recover the next day to get more beverage package value. The spa is very, very pretty. They've got all sorts of rooms for treatments and massages. There's also a salon in this area. Now, my favorite thing about the spa on this ship was the thermal area. We actually went in there. If you're a returning uh, cruiser on MSC, you have gold status. You get one hour you could book in the thermal suite. It's pretty cool. They had big hot tubs. There's me enjoying it in my hat. Uh, these loungers were very comfortable. They also have a couple of steam rooms available you could go in. And actually, they had interesting scents. Like, this one smelled like papaya. Now, that's something you can buy a day pass for, a length of cruise pass. But for me, an hour was probably fine. This is also where you'll find the gym on board. And right in the front of the ship, great views if you're on a sea day. But the gym is pretty small. And, like, we went to the gym actually twice on this ship. Go us. And uh, on sea day, every cardio machine was taken. It was slammed in there. On deck seven in the back of the ship is where you'll find the Amatista Lounge. One of the biggest lounges on board the ship. And a, like a lot of the lounges are used for different things. Um, this one will have your party band in the evenings. This also is the karaoke board on board the ship. 
There's and been it, one trivia every single day, and this is where it takes place. Mm -hmm. Pretty solid chairs. Mm -hmm. We got our welcome about a back event here. Yep. Also, like the big windows, if you're in the back, you get really nice views on mm -hmm. a sea day. Especially if it's a really, really crappy day of going to port with weather. Yeah. And of course, you can't have a lounge without a very large bar. There are two main dining rooms here on the MSC Magnifica, and they're both located right off the lobby. We are having our dining in the Quattro Venti dining room, which is on deck six. There's another one right below us on deck five. Let's go show you what dinner is like here on our cruise. The dining rooms are both one level, so they're not very like big or elaborate, but they are very pleasant. The dinner service does begin every night with a bread plate. Uh, we are lucky enough to be at a table for two, so we can have all this bread if we want to. Now, all the menus, unfortunately, are on these QR codes here, so bring your phone with you. I believe they have them on paper as well, but you have to ask for that. The appetizer, of course, has arrived. Molly got some spring rolls, and I went with a classic option, the French onion soup. The entrees have arrived. Molly got a shrimp risotto, and I got the steak Diane. Dessert has arrived. I got the chocolate cheesecake, and Molly got a Dolce Delicious cake. On deck seven, right in the atrium area, is the cigar lounge on board. And a really, really nice space in here. I, I am not a smoker, but I will say these are the best chairs on the entire cruise ship. Yeah, when no one's been in here, we've sat down. Yeah. <laughs> They're so comfortable. And there's a small bar in here as well. On deck seven is where you'll find the casino on board, the MSC Magnifica. It's the Atlantic City Casino. Not an overly large casino. It has been popular though. Yes. Um, of course, you have a big casino bar. Only two TVs here. Yeah. So not a great one to watch sports, but there's a chance sports could be on. Yep. Um, you do have a, the table games are all in the middle here. Not a ton of table games. Blackjack, roulette, three card poker, ultimate Texas Hold'em. You do have a lot, a lot of slot machines. Uh, one thing that I do like about MSC is they're very upfront about what it takes to get a free cruise. So if you're a gambler, they have a the casino rewards matrix over here, and they would tell you exactly how many points you need for a free sailing. I think that's really cool. Other cruise lines, they don't have it so out there in the open. Now, of course, I gambled like $5, so I'm nowhere near <laughs> <laughs> that. I do like the chandeliers in here. Very, very pretty. Uh, I think my favorite section of the casino is over here. They've got one of these video roulette machines. Also been very popular. Yeah, it's... Um, it's kind of fun. It's uh, you you can only you can gamble like fifty cents is the smallest bet. So if you want to just hang out and play for a bit, it's where you could do that. Over here, you do have a couple of video poker machines. There's not many uh, video poker, video blackjack. You can play in these here. There, I think there's only four in the entire casino. And then these could always be fun as well. The kind of it's, it's kind of a sucker game, but they do have the coin pushers, and like they've got extra bonus stuff in this one, so you can win like dollars and scratch offs. And a question mark. And Who a question mark. Uh, also want to point out that these stairs here will take you down to the Tiger Bar on deck six. And they're really, really nice stairs. You were say that they remind you of the Titanic. Yep, like a, a more... Titanic was built in like, you know, 2010 like this ship. <laughs> the thing I think is really cool, it doesn't apply to Molly and I, but on the top deck, they've got an awesome, gigantic children's playground area. Like, look at this. There's a, one in there with like a rope ladder on it. This one over here with uh, climbing structures and slides. I do feel like, um, like we don't travel with kids. We don't have kids. But having this on a ship is very important. It gives somewhere the kids can go and blow off steam. So the kids are not like running around a bar or a lounge. And yeah, it's really, really nice too. I'm not gonna film it because there's like kids over there. But on the other side, there's more playground stuff along with a little kid's pool that's probably, you know, six inches deep or so. On deck 14, in the back of the ship, is where you'll find some of the kids' clubs on board. And uh, we're filming this right after embarkation to show you what these things look like. Uh, this is like the teen club and the 12 to 14s. Got a foosball table and a, a very, very small pool table. 
it's weird because these are like kind of open air to the nightclub as well. And this is the junior club for kids seven to 11 with like one TV, I'm guessing with video games on it and a different foosball table. But yeah, weird to have your kids clubs in the same area as your big nightclub with dancing. On deck 14, you'll find the small, small, small arcade area on board. And it's also home to their motion simulator made by our friends over at Triotech. Looks like there's seven different rides you could go on. Now they did have a deal, um, not advertised in the paper version, but in the app, that at one point in our cruise, they had uh, buy one, get one. Yeah, there was also another one where you bought, um, if you bought the, the motion simulator ride, you got a free game of bowling. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as an arcade goes, it is very, very small. You've got air hockey, this motorcycle game. Uh, the crane, I don't believe, has been functioning all cruise long. And the Keymaster. But the motorcycles are pretty cheap. It's one euro. One euro? One euro. Oh, interesting. I wonder what the conversion rate is. On deck six, in the middle of the ship, you'll find the Tapiazo Bar, which is another lounge with a very, very big bar. Yes, they have a lot of bartenders and a lot of waiting, waiting servants at all these lounges. Yeah, we actually sit, hung out at this bar for a while. Bartender was really friendly, kept making his shots. And that night, that night went downhill a little bit, but for you, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's usually two different musical acts here. There's a Caribbean band as well as uh, the duo. Yeah, uh, so pretty good. And I, one thing I like about this, a lot of their bars too, they'll have two different musicians that play. So as soon as one stops their set, somebody else comes right back on. So there's always music in a lot of the lounges. Um, also worth noting, a lot of the bars on MSC, they'll all have espresso machines. Yes. So if you want a fancy coffee, you can get that here as well. Uh, deck six is where you're gonna find a lot of your shopping on board. And most of them are kind of on the outside of this lounge here. You've got one over there that's uh, your duty-free liquor store your jewelry and watches store. My personal favorite's the one over there, that's the MSC logo store, where you can get all of your MSC Cruise Line stuff or your, our Magnifica stuff. This one over here looks like it just sells purses. And then the last one over here on the left, that is perfumes. Not exactly the most scenic of decks, but on deck seven, there is some outside walking paths. So this is where all the, the light boats are. But if you need a, a quick break to get outside, this is one option to do it, so. It is time for lunch, and that means it's time to hit the buffet. The buffet is located on deck 13 in the back of the ship. Let's go see what is for lunch here on our day in port. Let's start at the most logical spot, dessert. For dessert, it looks like there's a coconut cake, some jello. Ooh, this, this looks good. I see cream puffs and then raspberry cheesecake. Blueberry. Blueberry cheesecake. Little tarts. More traditional food items here. We've got a pasta. Ooh, a pork loin with a demi glaze. Rice. Carrots. Fish filet with Creole sauce. That's a fun looking pasta. With broccoli and sausage. Yeah, mashed potatoes, chicken. Here on the carving station. Roasted salmon. Different. Oh, look at that, look at that. All right. Got a couple of soups, steamed rice and bean soup. They always have a selection of like cold cuts and cheeses. The Gouda cheese is so good. Yes. They do have a build your own salad area. A selection of cold salads, as well as burger or sandwich toppings. Right next to the mustard mayo ketchup. Oh, that cheese bread is fantastic. It is, it's so good. All right, then we got the grill area here. French fries, hot dogs. Look at this, the hot dog. Beef hot dog with pulled pork. Yeah. And some burgers. Around the buffet, there are a couple different drink stations with water as well as strawberry kiwi lemonade, tropical mango, and coffees and teas. Right in the front of the cafe, there is a very large build your own salad area. There are two different bars in the buffet area, one in the front and one in the back. Also, what's really nice is every single table, if you want somebody to bring you a beer or a wine, you can hit the button for bar service. 
For those that want to eat a little bit healthier, there's a selection of fruits. Massive selection of fruits. Yeah, it, it keeps and going. Big. The pineapples look good. Yeah. We made it to the best part of the buffet. Emma sees an Italian cruise line, and one thing they do very, very, very well is pizza. Uh, some pizza is always the same. Some, some pizza has changed. Some pizza is weird. Yesterday I had one with hot dogs on top of a pizza. Yeah. And also the pizza will run really long hours too. Like I think you get pizza till around two in the morning and it is delicious. I've eaten so much pizza on this cruise ship. Such good bread too. If you go all the way to the back of the buffet, you get to a kid's corner. And this is important because it's also where you can get the soft serve ice cream machine. I think this is my favorite spot in the buffet. You've got this cool tree out here. It's in the back of the buffet area. Normally it's a little bit easier to find seats back here as well. And something I always like when cruise ships have this option as well, you could take your food and eat outside on the aft of the ship. Which we've done numerous times. At the back of the buffet, you'll find the ethnic corner. Looks like a lot of Asian food. Like today we got sweet and sour pork. That looks really good. Sauteed cabbage. Some more rolls. And you get a little, a little bit of funky stuff too, like fried tofu and a Kung Pao sauce, and then fried rice. All around the ship you will find these, kind of these big screens. They'll do a lot of the same functions that the app will do, but they are nice to have all around the ship. You, um, you get maps, you get like, oh no, where's the nearest bathroom? Help me, help me. You're here, you need to go there to find the toilets. But uh, they are pretty handy. Located kind of in an odd spot is the ship's one and only upcharge restaurant, and that is the Oriental Plaza, which is mostly sushi. Now there's gonna be some hot items, but it's gonna be mostly sushi. Um, you do the dining experience for $34. This is not, not somewhere where we decided to eat. It's uh, with all the sushi, it's not really for me. But if you want something different from the main dining room and the buffet, it is offered in here. It does look like a pretty nice room as well. Another nice touch on the ship here is the card room. So if you're a big fan of playing various card games, or I think we saw a lot of people in here playing dominoes the other day, it's a pretty nice room to do so. Sad that they don't actually have any board games, so you have to bring your own. If you haven't sailed with MSC Cruises before, um, they have these weird kind of credit card activation points, where at some point during your sailing, you have to come here and register your credit card. Um, it's, it, I mean, it takes all two seconds. There's a bunch of these machines around the ship. In the atrium area on deck seven, you'll find the future cruise desk. So if you want to book a cruise while you're on a cruise, and normally you get some perks, like you'll get like double loyalty points or onboard credit. Uh, we have booked on board MSC before, so there are some, there is some value to be had. On deck 10, if you walk all the way to the front of the ship, you get to a small kind of balcony area. It's like a secret area. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the coolest places to watch the ship pull into or out of a port. I do kind of look into the crew only section with their their plunge pool hot tubby thing. But yeah, if you want to watch yourself sail into or out of a port, great spot to do that. On deck seven over by the sports bar is where you'll find the photo gallery on board. So if you took any pictures, this is where you would go to buy them. And I love it when they don't can't sell the pictures. They have these pictures up and this slides open and they'll have all the pictures behind it. Yeah. It's genius, it makes it beautiful when you can't uh, sell yep. pictures. Yep, you can also buy uh, GoPros and other things over here as well. I always love when cruise ships have something like this. This can be found on deck seven and whenever a cruise ship goes to a new port for the first time, they tend to get a gift from that port and these are displayed over here and I love that they're all kind of, some of them are quirky, some of them are awesome, some of them are, you know, like this one's just a picture just of Sydney. Like, that's, yeah. that's not too interesting, but then some of them are really, really cool. And the ship does visit a lot of ports. I know next year uh, it's going on a world cruise. So that would be, I'm sure they'll probably get a couple more new things and on that world cruise. And apparently they uh, tried a world cruise in 2020. Yeah, I, I'm gonna say they might not have finished that one looking at, looking at the dates there. But the next one I'm sure will go pretty well on deck seven, right next to the casino, you will find the Timeless Studio. So if you want to get some fancy pictures taken and we're all done up for, you know, uh, the white party or the Caribbean night, all sorts of stuff, 
can get that done in here in what looks like it used to be it was a library. The library because the sign still says library. Yep, but no longer a library. So unfortunately, we can't leave a copy of Experience the Point Volume Three here. For our cabin, we had an interior cabin. We were in one 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 four two, a pretty small cabin. Yes, it's very small. Um, it, it can sleep up to three people. You do have the the Pullman bed over there. I bonked my head on that the other yes, day. Be careful. <laughs> that was not a fun time. A decent sized TV over here. Uh, not not a decent amount of channels. Probably like ten or so channels. No but, movie channels. Yeah. You do get like Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon though. I mean, mm -hmm. which Blues Clues and Looney Tunes and all sorts of stuff. Um, a decent amount of storage if you're on a shorter cruise. You do the vanity right here. If you were on a longer cruise, like if you were on that 140 day world cruise, is going to do not a ton of storage for something like that though. I mean, it's like nine drawers and then yes, you know, open, open this up and uh, wait for it to focus. Yeah, all that stuff right there. There's a safe, a room for my vacation hat. I would definitely bring more hangers if you're on. Yeah, you might be able to request them as well. Yeah. There is a mini bar. This thing did not open at any point in time. There was a sheet that told it like, hey, if you want to order something from the mini bar, you could order it. We did not because we had the beverage plan, so I'm not going to do that. And of course, everyone's favorite part of the cruise ship stateroom experience, the bathroom. Uh, pretty small bathroom. It's got the shower curtain, the dreaded shower curtain. I did like the uh, the the handle moves, so that's uh, pretty cool. We got shower gel and shampoo over there. Uh, plenty of storage for all your your bathroom stuff, and of course the terrifying cruise ship toilet noise. Now, at no point in time during your stay on the Magnifica, do not throw an apple in the toilet. If you do. They'll, they'll charge you 200 euros. And there we go. That'll do it for our cruise aboard the MSC Magnifica. A little bit of uh, information about this cruise. It cost $445 per person, and that was before any of the port taxes, fees, gratuities. We did also upgrade our beverage package to the fancy one for $20 a day. Now, like any sort of cruise or vacation, um, there's gonna be some good parts and some bad parts. Um, let's talk first about the good and look on the positive side. What are some of your favorite parts about this ship, Molly? Uh, the staff, the staff and crew were very, very friendly, especially the bartender. They would talk to you, remember your names. Very friendly. They also felt a little bit more human on this cruise ship than other ones. Sometimes you'd, it, there's like a weird kind of like server servant thing, and I didn't get that vibe at all on this ship. They were more like more like chill people. Yes. Which I really do enjoy. Um, I think this was one of the easiest embarkation and one of the easiest debarkation processes I've had on any of my 67 cruise ships. Oh yes, it took probably 10 minutes to get on board and. 10 minutes getting off, it was very, very easy, very nice. And sometimes that, that embarkation, debarkation process could be a nightmare, either a trip ruiner on the onset or the offset, not at all on our cruise on this ship. That was wonderful. Uh, another positive is a lot of bars has uh, free chips and peanuts when you're uh, drinking, so they give you free snacks. Yeah, that's really cool. I'm not sure if that's like, I know it's a big Italian tradition, like you get free snacks during like happy hour kind of times, so maybe it's just like their version of that, but man, I love that at the bar. Sitting down, having some Lay's potato chips and peanuts while, while drinking a beer and listening to music, that that got a big thumbs up for me. Um, as a, somebody that likes to cruise with more, more of an adult area or adult atmosphere, there were very few kids on board, almost none, and you really didn't see them or feel them. We've been on a couple of Royal Caribbean cruises lately that have been complete kid chaos in the buffet, in the atrium. There was none of that at all, much more relaxed. The kids, I guess they just, they stayed in the kids club, or they stayed in that really cool playground, but they did not go around bothering me. Uh, one of my highlights was the uh, Circus Stories show. It was one of the uh, theater shows, and it was really, really good. A lot of different acts. They had a, a, a bicycle, like a bicyclist doing tricks. They did jugglers, hula hoopers. Uh, just a very cool show. And it was very impressive. It was also not your standard cruise ship show where it's just like, you know, singing and dancing for 30, 40 minutes. This was, you know, bringing all these specialty acts. And these guys kind of, this supposed to be like the only thing they do on the ship is this like 10 minute segment of a show. So it's probably pretty expensive for them to produce. But yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Um, also, the... The, there was plenty of bars on this ship and plenty of really big bars, so you really never had to wait in line for a drink, which I thought was great. Another thing about the bars that I liked is that a lot of the bars had two different stages, 
So as soon as one musician finished, another one started. There was not much lag in the entertainment once the music started. Yeah, yeah. I do think the MSC provides a really good value for money compared to other cruise lines. Um, again, on a four-night cruise, uh, you know, a beverage package could be around $400. And we got a beverage package, Wi-Fi, and stateroom for $445. Uh, one thing in the bars, you know, talking about the friendly bartenders, a good bar experience. We, uh, I think I did more shots on this cruise ship than I've done on any cruise ship before. Uh, we were at one of the bars in the Piazza area, or La La, the, whatever they called it, like uh, Piazio. It, the, all the bars had weird, uh, weird Italian names. But we, I saw they had a bottle, a bottle of uh, Patron XO Cafe, which has been discontinued for years. So I, I sit down, I'm like, oh man, we got to do some baby Guinness shots. And he's like, oh, you guys like shots? I'm like, well, we're not the biggest fan. He's like, oh, you have the beverage package? We'll make some shots. And I ended up doing like three or four shots. Well, not with the bartender, but uh, like he made us like three or four really fun shots. Same thing on the private island. We were sitting there at the lighthouse bar and um, just start making shots for everybody. Mm -hmm. and Multiple that, times. Yep. Uh, for me, there was a lot of, going back to the music, a lot of different variety of music. Uh, there was a guitarist, a guitarist that does country, which you don't get on cruise ships yeah. much. You had a saxophone player, a pianist. Steel drum some, guy. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, like a steel drum trio. Duo. Lot, a lot, lot of music. A lot of different stuff. So that, that was good. So then if you didn't like one type of music, you just go to the next bar and you'll find something else. You don't like that, I'll go to the atrium and there'll be something something else in there. Uh, the sports bar, probably my favorite bar on the ship, and a really cool aesthetics. I like the Olympic theme and some of the lighting fixtures in there. I thought that was neat. One of my highlights for any MSC cruise, the pizza. It mm. definitely has the best pizza on any cruise line, in my personal opinion. And uh, some things that annoy me on something like a Carnival cruise line, where if you want that late night pizza, you might end up in a 20 minute line for it. Mm -hmm. MSC, they've got lots of pizza on the buffet. You walk up, you get your slice. So it's kind of bang, bang. And one final thing, I'm a big lover of animals. And while we were on the private islands, sort of by the lighthouse bar, looking back at the cruise ship, there was a family of stingrays, like 12 of them just going around the beach. Now, if I was in the water, I probably would not have enjoyed that so much. But just looking from the outside, it was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Now, those are some of our favorite parts about this trip on the MSC Magnifica. Unfortunately, with the good do come some bad. On any trip, there's going to be parts that you quite you, you just don't like as much. And for us, there were a couple of them on this cruise ship, starting with, I think, probably my biggest complaint. Uh, the activity lineup was pretty lacking until about 4 p.m. Uh, we had one day where we were supposed to be on the private island, got changed into a day at sea because of weather, and there was just nothing happening on the ship. Yeah, they only had uh, two pool activities, a bingo, and one trivia before 4 p.m., and that was it, and the trivia was slammed. Yeah, and I think that was at 4 p.m. as well. Yeah. Uh, we went to Nassau, Bahamas. We weren't going to get off the ship because we had to do the ship tour and wanted to just hang out and enjoy the beverage package. Nothing happening on this ship at all. So Yeah, they... between 11 a.m. to 3, there was no events at all. So that was a major downfall of the SOC cruise. Now, it is an older ship, and we did have some weather on it, and those both caused issues. Would it be an older ship? We got There's parts of the ship which had a very bad vibration to it, and if you're, I guess, going in the wrong wind or going too fast, like, the ship would shake. And for me and a lot of people, that's worse than kind of a, a pitching and rolling seasoning kind of thing. And also with the weather, uh, something that was kind of annoying is every single night there was supposed to be a deck party. We never got a deck party because the weather was so bad. They kept moving them to the Tiger Lounge, which is a nice lounge, but it would be so much cooler being underneath the, the stars and the sea air in a much larger location on the pool deck. For me, the nightclub, it's a giant nightclub, but in a really weird spot on the ship. And I think it, it opens up very late. And I think it takes a long time for people to be able to find the nightclub. The first night we went, it was pretty much dead by the time we left. We were there for about 30 minutes. We went another night later in the cruise, and it was a little bit popular, but it was just a massive, massive nightclub, and it felt empty. Yeah, the ship does have a bit of an odd layout. Like, our, our stateroom was on deck 12. No, deck 11. We were on deck 11. If you wanted to go to deck 13, you could not walk up the stairs to get to deck 13. You had to take the elevator, which I thought was really weird. Um, other parts of the ship, like a lot of the the entertainment's on deck six. Um, some of the elevators will take you to the other side of a dining room, and then you've got to go up and over the dining room on deck seven. Uh, for me, with the entertainment, 
going back to that, we had the late night dining because we wanted to pay a table for two. And it was great that they were able to accommodate us. But with the late night dining, you miss a lot of entertainment. There is a name that tune and a game show every single night that we missed that was only during the late night dining. So in the for the early dining, they really don't miss much because they do play the show twice. And besides that, there's only music going on. But if you have that late night dining, you miss a lot of entertainment. Yeah, and unfortunately with MSC, you don't know your dining time or table until you get on board, which is a pet peeve I have. Like they make you pay, like I think you got to book an Oreo package and then you could just dine whenever you want. If you book anything under that, well, you're at the mercy of the ship. And like, I think we were set at a table for eight and we're like, got our table changed to a table for two and that pushed us to late dining instead. So just something I, I'm not a big fan of there. Also like uh, the main dining room dinner service was wildly inconsistent. One day dinner took an hour and 40 minutes. One day dinner took 45 minutes. So you really don't know how long that experience is going to take. Yeah, it was a, an hour and 45, uh, 40 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes, and then another 45 minutes was what, or four nights. Yeah, it's, it's very hit or miss of how long that dinner experience will take. Mm -hmm. As a big fan of the beverage package and uh, going to a whole bunch of different bars, unfortunately, no bars on the ship had a unique menu. Um, the sports bar did have more beers as well as more wines than some of the other bars, but there was no like cocktail bar or martini bar. Or, oh, you've got to go here to get this kind of drink. There was just pretty much a standard menu everywhere, but they did have a lot of liquors and some bars didn't have all the liquors that other bars had. One of the worst things for me was the pillows in the rooms. They look like nice pillows when you walk in, but as soon as you lay down on them, all the air comes out and you're literally laying on nothing. Yeah, if you needed to, uh, like if you wanted to watch TV, you had to kind of like fold up your pillows. Or I don't know if we, maybe we could have asked our cabin guy for more pillows, but these were not good pillows. We already had four pillows. Well, I mean, we I, we <laughs> clearly needed at least six. Um, yeah, but these pillows definitely seem like they were the, in the end of their service life and sh probably should have been tossed out about three months ago. But there we go. That'll do it for our cruise on the MSC Magnifica. Some good, some bad. Overall, I had a very, very pleasant time. If you've got any questions about the Magnifica, let us know in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you guys didn't watch videos like this, well, we can go on so many cruise ships and something we really, really enjoy doing. So thank you very much for watching.